day and welcome to another episode of Tech Adept Crafts. My name is Anthony and today we are talking about the November Patreon piece from TAC. This is Defiance. The piece is very familiar for those of you that are avid readers and that's that's good but we're calling it Defiance. Um, it even says Defiance on the uh, on the sleeve which if you know your Dwarvish runes, you'd be able to work that out. This piece has been designed by In Lovecraft, our designer for TAC, and it is an amazing piece of scenery. The, the possibility for this going into a full riverbend diorama or lake end diorama is, is oh, there, there are a huge number of ideas that I'm wanting to try out with this one, but I, I have one in mind that I'm going to do in a, in a future video. This is just painting up the pieces, but I will be doing a video where I actually put them into the full river with the lake as part of a um, as part of a diorama board. So as I said, it is the Patreon piece. If you would like to download and print this model yourself, you can jump on over to patreon.com slash techadeptcrafts. You will be able to download this model if you are a member of the hobby goodness or the full tackle. We'd love to see you over at Patreon supporting uh, the channel and making sure that we can continue these videos and build our little community of 3D printers and painters. As a basic starting point though, if you'd like to support the channel, um, please hit that like button, hit the subscribe and leave a comment down the bottom as to what sort of scene you would like to see these pieces put into uh, and, and how far you'd like me to take that, that river. But otherwise, sit back and enjoy the tutorial for painting up Defiance and I will see you at the end. Cheers. After a 3D print is finished, you'll often find little bits of stringing, which you can remove very easily with a heat gun. Uh, and there is often a little bit of a rim around the bottom of your print, which is often referred to as elephant's feet. You can just file this off, or you can use a, uh, a fine knife to scrape that away. I then give the entire model a Xenothol undercoat and base it with a medium gray. I, I'm choosing to go gray with my stonework because that is the color that I do a lot of stonework with and this will actually tie in with the river system that I have done previously. As I said in the intro, I am planning to do this uh, as a full diorama, but we haven't got to that point yet. To give my mix of various different earthy colors around the entire model, I am going in here with a raw sienna, and I will also add a burnt sienna later. So a mid-brown and a dark brown, and this is just dots over the entire base of gray. The next thing I add is this Deep Violet by Liquitex. It's a beautiful color, I love this one. It's great for adding shadow, which again, I'm putting over the entire model and I'm using mainly on the underneath, but also through the cracks, through the folds in the cloak there of the, of the statue, as you can see, uh, and also a little bit into the inscription that you can see on the sleeve of the statues. I do water these paints down fairly heavily while I'm doing these dots so that they don't overpower, so that they blend smoothly, so that they flow down into the cracks there, particularly when I'm doing the shadowing with this purple, but mainly so that they go on smoothly and I can wipe them away if I think it's too much or just smudge it a little bit with a, with a finger or a, a separate paintbrush with a little bit of extra water in it. I'd like to take a moment to thank all of the people over at the Hobby Goodness on Patreon. You guys are legendary. I really, really appreciate your support. Many of you are there just to get that STL file, but I really appreciate your support. I'll pay particular attention to say thank you to Tiger O'Connor, who is uh, one of the young sons of one of the patrons, and I heard that he has been really enjoying seeing his dad's name up there on that list. Well, welcome Tiger now there as well. 
but the full tacklers you guys go above and beyond some of you have been with me from the beginning and i really appreciate your support andreas rocco david bennett david scaberis gene mcguire judy hayes caragrim christina b lopiana Mousetrap Creations, Night Lurker, Riri, Sean McKinley, and Toggers. Thanks, guys. Your patronage really means so much to me. Now to add some moss effect, this lovely dark green from Liquitex Basics is going over upper parts of the model not going in the riverbed I'm, I'm leaving that fairly blank at the moment because i will work that up in the diorama but i'm placing this where you might find a buildup of moss or uh, some form of i don't know grasses or whatever might be in there i'm not going to be putting grass on the statue just on the the uh, hillside around it the steps going up there Again, this Kaiser color is doing the same sort of thing. I wasn't entirely happy though with the soft moss when I put it on here, first of all, I felt it was a bit too much. Uh, so I put some just on the steps and then watered that down afterwards to blend it through. It gave just an extra color to the steps and made them stand out a little bit more. Added a slight dry brush with that soft moss over the uh, inscription on the statue. That way, again, it just stands out that little bit more. Using the brown wash blend created by Jeremy over at Black Magic Craft, we are going over the entire model. This will help to blend all of the pieces back together. Uh, all of those various colors will really unite, first of all with this, uh, this brown wash, but then with a light gray dry brushing over the top. It's amazing how easy it is to bring all of those colors together with just those two steps. Now, a lot of people will be saying, well, why are you putting a wash when you are doing a 3D print? Won't it show up the layer lines? You know, it's a 3D print. I don't worry about the fact that there might be some layer lines showing. I'm not doing a mold, I'm doing a 3D print. I rejoice in that fact that it's a 3D print. Adding foliage by putting some PVA glue using just a paper clip here. And rather than have great big clumps of glue, I'm only just putting little tufts and then sprinkling my flock over the, the top of that. Again, just to tie this in with my other river pieces, I'm only using this green flock. I'm not going overboard and adding so much extra. When I go to do the diorama, I may add more various types of flock or foliage into that mix, but at this stage, it's just gonna be the flock. Always make sure that you clean up afterwards though and save all of those off bits. So there you have it, Defiance. Well, there's one half. This was a, a fairly quick painter because uh, with having so much stonework in it, it does make it really nice and easy to paint quickly, depending on what type of stonework you are wanting to get. But the real challenge is going to come in how to put this into a diorama. All of this, this area through here is very much part of the riverbed. That's going to be a challenge because this doesn't lend itself to having resin effect put on it as is. So I need to put this into a diorama so I can then add that, um, that water effects onto it. But very much looking forward to the challenge and I think it will, it'll be an amazing piece to put on a board. And you know, go, yep, there is defiance. Ladies and gents, if you enjoyed the tutorial, make sure you hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.